Hi folks, Guy from Midwinter Minis here. Welcome to episode 4 of this Blackstone Fortress speed painting series aimed at getting your models game ready with simple but effective paint techniques. In this episode we're going to be painting the two Chaos Space Marines and Obsidious Malax, the Chaos Lord. First thing we'll take care of is the bases. Now just like in the previous episodes, we'll use a mix of paper and super glued sand and gravel to obscure the imperfections on the bases and add interesting scenic elements as well. Now once that's taken care of, we can prime the models using our grey primer. Now once the primer is dry, give all the models an undercoat using our matte black spray paint. Now why not just spray black in the first place? Well, because this paint isn't a primer, and it won't be as durable as the functional grey primer we used first. The last thing you'll want is for your model's paint jobs to start chipping and scratching off during your games. As your black paint is drying, you might find that the spray didn't quite reach some of the hidden areas on the models, like behind the heads and between the power pack and the body. If you spot some of these thinly covered areas, just thin down a bit of black paint with water and use your standard brush to get into all these areas. And once you're done, the Chaos Space Marines should be totally black. And that's it for this episode. Bye for now. <laughs> Almost had you. Next we'll use our medium grey paint to dry brush the armour to start lifting out some of the detail. Add a little grey paint to an absorbent surface like paper, card or MDF, and using your dedicated dry brush start working the paint into the bristles until almost no paint comes off. Now lightly drag your brush back and forth across all of the models. This will deposit a thin layer of grey paint while leaving the black in the recesses that the brush can't reach. Remember to hit the rocky elements on the bases too. Next we'll do the same thing with white, but we'll be a bit more sparing with our highlighting, focusing on key areas like the hands, weapons, grenades and the weird pipes. The models are starting to take shape a bit already. Now we're going to start slowly picking out the trim of the armour using a one-to-one -one mix of gold and silver. Mixing the silver and gold will give the trim a more antique metal look. Thin the paint with a drop of water so it flows nicely, and using your detail brush start tracing the raised edges of the armour. The process will take some time, and uh, if you don't feel confident doing it, you can totally skip this step if you want. The models will still look awesome in the end, and you can always do the trim later when you feel a bit more confident with your brushwork. While we've got this colour, make sure to pick out some parts of the weapons that you'd like to be metallic to. You'll inevitably make mistakes while painting the trim, but don't worry, at this early stage you can just correct any mistakes with a little thin down black paint. Once the metallic paint is dry, we'll use our black wash to cover the miniatures. Paint it onto all three models in all areas, with the exception of the weird pipes on their armour. Leave these grey. Once you're done, leave the models to dry. And if you notice any wash pooling too much in any areas, dry your brush off on some paper towel and just touch the wash. It should absorb into the brush and remove the excess wash from the model. Here you can see the effect this has side by side with an unwashed model. It just gives everything a nice depth and adds a weathered effect to the metallic. Now we're going to start picking out some of the coloured areas. First we'll thin our brown paint with a little water and colour the pistol holster and straps of the space marines and the pelt around the chaos lord's shoulders. You'll probably need a second coat of this as we're lightening up a black base coat. By the time you've painted all three models, the first model you've painted will probably be dry, so add the second coat then. While your second coat of brown is drying, we'll start painting the flesh, bone and horns of the models. Mix your flesh tone with white in a one-to-one -one ratio and thin slightly with water. Using your detail brush, paint your first coat onto the faces of the models, trying your best not to spill any onto the black armour or silver trim around the skin.
Make sure to catch the skull and bones on top of Malax's headdress, the little bony teeth on their pauldrons, the horns on the helmeted Chaos Marine, and the claws on the pelt around Malax's shoulders. And here's how everything should look after the second coat of this colour. Oh, and also don't forget the little skull on Malax's base. Next we're going to use our red paint, thin slightly with water, to start painting the draped fabric. Again, depending on which red paint you're using, as we're painting over black you'll probably need two thin coats. And like the brown, once you've finished all three models, they'll probably be dry enough to start the second coat. There are a few extra red parts on Malex. You'll want to paint the plasma coils of his plasma pistol, inside the rune on his power hammer, his hair coming out of the headdress, and his cape, of course. Here's how things should look after two coats of red. Now our main colours are set, we can start adding depth and texture. We'll make their exposed skin look a little more deathly by creating a purple glaze. Thin out one drop of purple paint with ten drops of water and paint it onto the faces of Malax and the bareheaded marine. Again, if it pulls too much, wick away some of the glaze with a drier brush. Next we'll use our brown wash to add shadows to the red and brown elements, all except the rune and plasma coils on Malex. Hit the draped fabric, the horns, the teeth on the armour, the bones, skulls, hair and hammer handle. We'll also add some brown wash to the rocky elements we added to the bases. And once you've covered all of these areas, you'll probably find that the purple wash we just used on the skin is dry. Use a little brown wash now on the front of the faces to add some life to their facial features. Now while we're waiting for these washes and glazes to dry, we can use our black paint thinned with a little water to paint the bases and their rims. Be careful not to obscure any of the rocky elements on the bases while you're doing this. Now as we prime these models black, you'll likely find you're only covering a little grey dry brushing on the bases, so you'll likely just need one coat. And once they're dry, here's how the fearsome Chaos Marines look. Pretty awesome for some simple painting techniques. And this is where we could call the speed paint done. Although the painting of the metallic trim took a little time, it's a fairly foolproof process and you can easily fix your mistakes with black as you go. There are a few more easy steps we can do to really make the models come alive, and just before we get into them I'd like to quickly remind you to like this video if you've enjoyed it so far, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave me a comment below, I do read them all. Ok, so first up, let's mix yellow and red in equal parts and thin with a touch of water, and use this hot orange to highlight the red fabric. Just run your detail brush across the fabric, following the lines of its folds and avoiding the recesses. It's quite an easy process, the paint is thinned, and although it looks pretty bright when you paint it on, it will dull down as it dries. We'll also paint the central area of the coils on Malix's plasma pistol, and tilt your brush on its side and gently drag it along the outside edges of the hair coming out of Malix's headdress. Now paint a little of this orange mix into the recesses of the rune on the hammer. Now don't go all the way to the edges though, we're trying to make it look like it's glowing from the centre. And now for the big payoff, highlighting the cape. 
This is what miniature painting is all about. Who doesn't love adding natural highlights to a big flowing cape? Do it exactly the same as we did with the hanging fabric, and follow the natural folds, don't go into the recesses, and just imagine where the light would be hitting from the top. If you're struggling to visualize this, hold the model so you can see it from the top down, and make a mental note of the parts of the cape you can see clearly, then paint them. It's simple, but it's pretty effective. And while we're waiting for the highlights to dry, we'll water down our yellow paint with an equal amount of water to create a strong yellow glaze. Using your detail brush, dab this onto the center of the hammer rune and the center of the plasma coils. The paint should spread out into the recesses, creating a cool, subtle glow effect, playing off the red and orange we painted on earlier. And for our final step, we can use a slightly thinned down silver paint to pick out the edges and details on the trim and metallic elements. Now try to be a bit random with this step. These are supposed to be ancient, corrupted warriors of the Abyss. I doubt they would spend relaxing afternoons buffing their armor with Silvo. Now once you're done with the silver highlights, I think you can call it a day. Three fantastic models painted in a simple but effective scheme using easy techniques. That's what this series is all about. It can be pretty intimidating painting such complex looking models, especially when one of them is a named character, but a painted mini is always better than a bare plastic mini, so give it a go. I'm sure you'll be happy with the results. If you've been following along with this series, you'll now have four spindle drones, four Urghuls, and three Chaos Marines painted up. That's 11 models out of 44 finished, so we're a quarter of the way through. Now give yourself a pat on the back, hit the subscribe button, and join me next time when we'll be painting the four Chaos Beastmen models. I'll see you then. Bye for now.